Okay, and we are live with another WWE Raw and Tough Enough review on this August 18th, 2015. I'm your host as always, Tony, with my two co-hosts as always, the Bizarre One, Dave. How you doing tonight, Dave? I'm awesome. And my other co-host, uh, as always as well, Justin. How you doing tonight, Justin? I'm doing great, thanks. All right, so uh, YouTube has decided to change shit up on us, so I don't know how this is going to work. Hopefully this Google Hangout uh, gets uploaded onto YouTube. If not, I'm recording uh, simulca simultaneously on this webcam recorder on YouTube. Uh, it's all black for some odd reason. Uh, I'm not sure why I'm not showing up on there, but um, we'll figure out everything by Sunday, hopefully. Um but yeah, let's just jump right into it. We had WWE Raw right uh, last night, which was the go-home show. Um, we had uh, a pretty stacked show where we had Brock Lesnar, Undertaker, John Cena. And um, yeah, I guess pretty much that was it. The, all the big hitters were on the show. Um, we had a contract signing, and Undertaker said his piece, and Brock Lesnar as well. We'll get into that later on in the show. But uh, let's start off with the opening segment, which was Triple H and Stephanie McMahon coming down to the ring, pretty much doing a little cheesy um, promotion for SummerSlam that is just that is this Sunday. Of course, they announced pretty much every match. That, well, not every match, but at least half of them. I'm surprised they didn't mention the Stardust match, um, seeing that there's a celebrity in it. But they announced, of course... The world title match, the Brock Lesnar match. Um, I think that was it, actually. Oh, the Divas match as well. So I guess they they have high hopes on that match. They announced that Sasha Banks would face Nikki Bella on Raw and that they would also announce... Did they announce the tag match as well? I don't think so. Okay. Well, yeah, they didn't announce that. But that was the opening match of the night. Uh, we had a rematch from i guess a couple of weeks ago where it was orton and cesaro taking on kevin owens and sheamus um this is your quick thoughts of the opening segment from you two and then we'll move on uh we'll start with dave uh, i was such a promo like you said there's not really much to talk about they only really didn't pretty much plug SummerSlam, and that was pretty much it Oh, and if you didn't remember, the network is nine ninety nine. Uh, Justin, as well. Yeah, I mean that was just a cheap pop. To get a plug in for them. Basically, all that opening deal was, and they said so they just mentioned the big matches for SummerSlam, and again they mentioned that SummerSlam was four hours long. You know, yada yada yada. Get it? You won't be sorry. Then I think they actually also talked about NXT also the night before. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. For, I must have forgot about that. They and. Did. They also uh, announced that there were nine matches on the card before another one got added on later on last night. Um, let's talk about the opening match, which was Kevin Owens and Sheamus taking on Randy Orton and uh, Cesaro. If anybody didn't know or was living under a rock, they announced that Sheamus will face Randy Orton once again at SummerSlam. Um I mean, this is not a match I really care about. Um, no. Nope. Nor do I really want to see. Uh, but I guess I get it. Um, we'll start with you first, Justin. What were your thoughts on the match, which ended with a RKO, I think, on Sheamus and Randy Orton picking up the win, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, it was. Um, me, personally, I really didn't care for it. Uh, I wish it would have been actually uh, two singles matches. Having uh, Cesaro face Sheamus and then uh, Orton face uh, Kevin Owens, you know, the other way around. Uh, that to me, that would have been better. I would have enjoyed that probably more. The match was good. I mean, I enjoyed the match itself, but I would have preferred them both fighting singles instead of the tag match. Yeah, I think we can all agree that we're kind of uh, played out with the whole Randy Orton and Sheamus feud. Uh, oh, yeah. They've been going at it for quite some time now. Uh, it seems like uh, this is an everlasting feud. It's like they have, they don't have anything for either of them to, to do. Yeah, because they have no idea what they want to do with them yet. So, I mean, I guess it's a little bit understandable that you stick the two big guys against each other. But 
uh, it's a played out for you, Dad. I just hope it ends very, very soon. Uh, Dave, your thoughts? I think you agreed with Justin, I think. I mean, yeah, I mean, we talked, and, like, I told you last night, that's like, I mean, I could, the match is good, like, it was about 20, 15, maybe 20 minutes, I mean, I'm going to make a bold prediction and say that Owens wins on Saturday. Yeah. I, just, I hope so. I just, like maybe disqualification, uh, but I'll win. Well, he's, it's a ladder match. Oh, so. God, that's true. Um, I just think that if they're not going to really have him any – I think he's too much of an asset just to, like, not bury him, but like uh, to not really have anything for him to do. And I think if you stick him on um, NXT back and forth, that is, then it, I mean it could work out. But yeah, we're the one to build Seth Bauer up and possibly. A Samoa Joe and Bauer feud for the next few months or whatever it could happen. I mean, that would bring up these other guys like Tammy Bankley back sometime next year. But they like, I think there's I really just too know. many, there's just too much unfinished business with Owens in NXT. I, I could, yeah. Like, like Sammy Zayn, there's a thing there. They could bring him up as soon as he's ready to come back. And Bro, he go right after Kevin Owens. Yeah, I mean, there's just too many feuds. Um, Unfinished what do you mean, right now. Yeah, well, unfinished with him. Like, you have the feud with um, Polly Deo Tommy. You got the feud yeah. with uh, Sami Zayn. They still haven't done yet. I mean, there's just to me, there's just too many uh, unfinished business with that man. And if you just have him like <clears throat> here from NXT, I mean. I highly, really, highly doubt that we'll see it happen on the main roster. So why not just stick them on NXT for a couple of more months and, you know, maybe Balor wins it back or something like that. But I just don't see uh, – you know, back when he first moved up, I didn't think he'd move back to – NXT. NXT, but I just think it makes the most sense, honestly. But we'll find out this weekend, like we said. Uh, next match on the – well, my thoughts on the on the, the match, um, I agree. Kind of a played out match already that we've seen it a couple of times already. Um, I agree maybe a singles match between them would have been better. Uh, I agree with that, but I don't – think we needed that tag match last night. I don't, I, Randy Orton pinning Sheamus kind of threw me off guard, but that just kind of shows me that Sheamus is probably going to win Yeah, uh, on Sunday, but we'll see. Uh, next match on the on the Raw last night. Back to the one uh, they had Taker on. That was oh, still. the Taker promo. Yeah. which is uh, like, Well, video package, really. Um, yeah. I didn't know that Charles was actually him for a minute. You know, they determine the shadow. I was like, okay, that's just his voice, and someone just standing there, but then he 
Yeah, Brian, Brian, I mean, it was just short. A basic taker promo, basically. Right, I just said yeah. the Reapers out to get. And the gates of hell are opening now, and he's coming for them, you know. Right, it's just nothing like to really talk about, but then it was just short and sweet and to the point, so. Makes you think if he was actually really there, I mean, that could have been recorded yesterday, I mean, the day before. Never right. Know. I thought that was like their meaning of him being on the show, so I'm glad he was actually on the show. Oh, yeah. Uh, to, to end the night. Uh, spoil alert. Um, next on the card, was that the Divas match? No, next was uh, Harper and Reigns. Oh, okay. All right. Harper versus Reigns with Ambrose on commentary. He was pretty, he was pretty good on commentary. I like that. Yeah, and Bray Wyatt at ringside as well. Um, to me, this just proves to me that Ambrose is going to turn on Reigns. Uh, too much of him talking about brotherhood and them being a family, and uh, I think he was kind of overdoing it, maybe overshadowing what may happen uh, at SummerSlam. I thought he was good on the mic. I mean, on the mic, on the commentary. I enjoyed him. On the mic. On, I, I enjoyed him taking Saxon's chair. I thought that was funny. It made him to get on his knees. Yeah. So, I mean – I think the gimmick is to to throw jabs at Saxton. I guess that's their just their punching bag. I, I I don't I don't think take it any serious. I think it's all funny oh, games. It's just fun. It's like a hazing. I you know, like a rookie thing. Yeah, because he he even said, "Hey, uh, JBL, I'm sitting by uh, Saxton. What does that What does that make you think of you or whatever he said?" Yeah. So I mean, it's just they're just playing funny games with Saxton. Yeah, Nobody basically. hates him or dislikes him or anything like oh, that. I, like, I said, he's a new commentary, comment, whatever you want to call it, commentary guy. And I think it's more that some of the guys who knew him from the next or Florida Championship Wrestling, whatever you want to call it. You know, I mean, they're just, so just doing the guy stuff. Yeah, just giving him a tough time. That's all. Yeah. It's all fun and games. Uh, but the match itself, I actually thought it was all right. I thought it was a good match. It's, what, a rematch from SmackDown, I believe? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it seems like there's a lot of rematches on Raw from SmackDown if you actually want to pay attention and watch SmackDown. I um, thought the match was way better than it was on SmackDown, obviously, because I think there was a... Bigger uh, audience, I guess you could say. And in a run-in, I think I think Bray Wyatt got involved in the match, if I'm not mistaken, or something. I think it was a DQ or something like that. Um, no, uh, Reigns actually won by Spear, or Superman's punch and then the Spear. Yeah, and I liked how... Uh, it was set up. He went for his little clothesline. Yep. Uh, Reigns caught him with the punch and then uh, speared him uh, at the end. What did you think of it, Dave? Oh, well, that's good. I mean, Reigns can go. He's not the most technically sound wrestler. I mean, he's not Brett Hart, obviously. I mean, but I mean, he can do some good stuff. Like I said, he can do some good stuff. He's better than Cena. Well, you know, they're kind of like one and the same with how they both get beat up for 15 or 20 minutes, come back with their three moves, and win the match more like this. But, I mean, he's more athletic, obviously. And the moves he does are different. He throws a great punch. Now, yeah. you want to talk about Cena's punches, that's another story. But, I mean, I mean, he makes it look good. So, I mean, yeah, he can't talk much, but, I mean, he's good in the ring. Right. I enjoyed the match. I mean, it's not gonna, it's, it's not Kurt Angle versus Bret Hart, but I mean, it was still a good match. Or Kurt Angle, they all have matches for Hart. Right. I mean, we'll we'll touch on more uh, what we think will happen at um, SummerSlam on tomorrow's video, but um, it's gonna be a long, a long card. I mean, a long, I'm not long card, a long. Um, night because there's a lot of matches, especially yeah. another wrestler like WrestleMania Junior. Uh, yeah, I mean, has, was WrestleMania? Do they have ten matches on that card? I don't think so. Uh, I think it was like seven or eight. I think. Yeah, I don't think there was that many matches on there, but I mean. Uh, this is shaping up. I'm not saying it did. I mean, because WrestleMania 31, honestly, wasn't the greatest WrestleMania. And the Summer Slam could end up being better 
no WrestleMania was. Ooh. Yeah. Really, I guess. I don't know. Because finally, is there a match on WrestleMania this year that was a bigger match than Undertaker than Brock? I mean, probably not, but I think that the matches itself on WrestleMania will be better than SummerSlam. I think the Rollins-Orton match, and then you had the main event, of course, with Reigns and Lesnar being better than what people thought it would be. Yeah. And you had the cash-in, and then... Um, there's a there's other, a ladder match. The, yeah, I mean, the ladder match is good. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like all the matches with like, Owen to Cesaro to Rusev and Ziggler to the main event to Cena versus Rollins title for title. I'm not saying a triple threat match for the Ice is gonna be great, but I mean it's still another a diva is a huge diva match. I mean, I mean everything seems to be changing right now. So I mean I like it. I mean. I'm really excited for SummerSlam. I think it's it could be. I think WrestleMania 31 or 30 is still one of my favorite WrestleManias by the past five years. But I mean, 31, I think. I mean, 30. 31 lived up. Didn't have like a lot of hype around it, but it ended up being a pretty good pay per view. And it I was think decent. I think the same thing with SummerSlam. It hasn't been hyped. Very well, other than the main event, of course. Mm-hmm. And um, it, it hasn't been over my either, though. Well, yeah, and I think it'll hopefully be better than what I think it will be. I mean, we'll all, we'll find out, of course, on Sunday. But like it, it right now I have like low expectations for it. I have middle. Mine's kind of on the fence. Because, I mean, I don't know how Undertaker's going to be in a match right now. I mean, he looks in, I mean, he looks in great shape, and don't get me wrong. But can that man go for, you know, 20 minutes, uh, 25 minutes in a match with Lesnar? I mean, to me, um, and we'll, I'm going to say this for tomorrow. Uh, we'll touch more about the tomorrow. But um, SummerSlam is, is, is a pretty stacked card, I guess, you, if you want to say. Uh, ten matches. I mean, Jesus, it's a lot of matches. Um, yeah, that was well, ring. Pre show too. Do they have a pre show match? I mean, geez. that's yeah. I don't think we will get one this time, but I mean, you never know. Yeah, you they, could, they could add something last minute or yeah, Zack Ryder or some shit like that. Um, next on the on the yeah, was that New York? Was that the the uh, yeah, Snuka, the just Snuka and. Uh, yeah, Tamina Snuka Becky versus Lynch. Becky Lynch, which was not a bad match. Oh. Um, I think Becky Lynch is starting to rub off on me a little bit more. Um, I, I don't know. I'm not really imp- – I guess I was more impressed with Charlotte in NXT than I am with her in WWE or, like, on the main roster, you know? Yeah, it's like she's kind of yeah, – like uh, More used better, or if that's even a word, but – I mean, you know, it seems like she's kind of getting lost in the shuffle a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I think right now there's the stock is definitely really high on Sasha Banks. Oh yeah, absolutely. And and yeah, Becky's like a like wow, you know, it's like a surprise. Like wow, we knew she was good, but she's really clicking with the main roster. Stepping her game up. The band, I should say, not the main roster, but on the main show, and it's. Like Charlotte's not really clicking as well as the other two are. Right. I mean, I liked how the ending was where she went for the roll up and then switched it to the arm bar or to whatever. What does she call it? A disarmor. Yeah, the disarmor, which is not an arm bar, but it's like a reverse arm, a submission all with the arm, which I'm sure hurts. Like I guess hell. it's like a version of an arm bar. Yeah. Like, I mean, reverse it's not arm bar. Like, yeah. Like the real arm bar or whatever Cobra or whatever they called it back in the day, but. I think hers is more like just an arm bar when you're just sitting on it or just pulling the arm up. It's more of like a UFC style arm. Well, no, I guess the original arm bar was more UFC, but I don't know. It's just an arm know, bar itself, and yeah, it looks nice. I mean, the way she pulls it off. I mean, you can hit it out of nowhere, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, 
Uh, solid match. She gets to win. Still, NXT Diva hasn't really been pinned in a singles match. I know uh, she, uh, like we said, NXT, she, uh, they lost in a tag match, but not singles yet. Yeah. Um, Dave, uh, your thoughts? Um, I thought I was surprised because I was like, oh, man, you never see her wrestle. Exactly. Yeah. Like, like, kind of like, to me, I was like, okay. I mean, what the last time we seen her on Raw having a match? I mean, I thought Becky Lynch, I thought they told the story, too, and it was like, Becky Lynch, the small, undersized, not really that small, but, you know, it just seems kind of like that. And the match went for maybe what, two hours? Yeah, it was like, 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 it was and that could be more to her not being in a lot of ring time, too. Um, but I thought the match was good. I think, you know, Tamina is a good wrestler as well. I don't think she just, she's just not given the right uh, chance either. You know, her, her knee might be jacked up still, too. That's why she hasn't doesn't come off the rope a lot anymore. Yeah, she's in a tough spot. You know, she's with Team Bad with two very athletic ladies and, you know, the enforcer again, like just like yeah, AJ. And, yeah. And both of them can wrestle. So, I so mean, I mean, I can wrestle too, but it's just like, she came in, she was doing the Uso thing. And yeah. Then, I mean, I mean, she, I, I mean, she can wrestle, but like, if you're going to ask a guy, Hey, would you rather see her Sasha or a Naomi wrestle? You know, nine out of 10 are going to probably pick Ni uh, Naomi or Sasha Banks. I know. Uh, three will probably take Sasha. Yes. So, I mean, nothing against the lady. I mean, it's she's just in a tough spot right now. I mean, she did good last yeah. night with Becky Lynch. And uh, um, what did you think of it, Justin? I, I liked it. I mean, for uh, the amount of time they were given, they uh, they both did good in the ring. Uh, like, you, like you said, too, I'm starting to come around on Becky Lynch. Uh, I first, you know, got a glimpse of her whenever she fought Sasha Banks in NXT. That was probably the, uh, I would say, the female match of the year so far for me. But, uh, mm. yeah, uh, it was good for what it was. So we can all agree that it was a pretty good match for uh, for what it was. Uh, the next match, Justin? Uh, Rusev and Henry. Okay, yeah. Um, Rusev and Henry, another match to progress a storyline not involving Mark Henry. Tough tough guy. Uh if anybody hasn't listened to the Jericho podcast with Mark Henry, I would That's an excellent one. Yeah, it's it's a pretty good one. Um so is the Sasha Banks one. That's a really good one too. That's that's the one I have not listened to yet. Uh, uh, but the best one so far, hands down, is the New Day uh podcast with Jericho. That one was really good. I enjoyed that one a lot. But anyways uh, Rusev faces Mark Henry, gets the win, of course. Um, Lana gets into the ring because she was on commentary. She gets in the ring and pretty much does the, the just bring it sign to uh, – she uh, kind of went into inner rock right there with the whole pointing the finger and telling her to bring it. Um, so Lana comes in, asks Rusev to come out there. Uh, Rusev ended up coming. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, Summer Ray. I apologize. Gets into the ring uh, along with uh, Rusev. Right? Rusev gets in the ring as well. And um, I guess they're gonna attack her. Both of them, I guess. And Lana's kind of doing the old peek around, waiting for someone. I guess the uh, the whole timing was off. Maybe Lana was expecting Ziggler to come out a little bit sooner. Yeah, she looked like five or six times around his shoulder. It's like, yeah, like, what the hell is going on? Uh, Ziggler finally ends up running down to the ring and does the rescue. Uh, saves her from the beatdown that she was going to get. Uh, she does even like a little flying karate kick to that was pretty uh, nice. that was pretty the good. Summer Rae, which was nice. Well, she had a skirt, too. There's no skirt. I don't even it. Yeah, so it was, what, it, what it was worth, it was nice. And uh, Ziggler ends up doing the super kick on Rusev. Um, 
later on in the night, they well, not later on that next segment, they show Ziggler and Lana backstage. And Ziggler says that they should add another match onto the card, mm -hmm. which they eventually do, which will be Ziggler versus Rusev one-on-one uh, -on -one at Summer Slam. Uh, Justin, what were your thoughts on the segment last night? And Dolph Ziggler's return. Did you? Th I thought the pop he got was pretty good. Yeah, he it was pretty good. Uh, the only thing I was just gonna say, uh, you know, uh, on tough enough, Sarah Lee gets shit for smiling in the ring all the time. Look how much uh, Lana was smiling last night. I mean, she couldn't not smile, so that was kind. I just kind of laughed at that. You know, Sarah Lee gets shit for smiling, and there was that's all Lana was doing. Right. But anyway, but no, yeah, the segment was really good. Uh, Ziggler came out to a big pop and, you know, did the basic save on Lana. And then we're going to see him uh, Sunday on SummerSlam. So I, I enjoyed it. I think the build has been good, too. I mean, yes. it's been a night. It's been a, what, a like a two month. Lana held her own being by herself, too, on that. I mean, she did all right. Yeah, it's been like a month or two long. Like, a, not a thing. Like, it's been played out very well to where you know the fish to the face was damn pretty hilarious yeah so i mean it's gonna be interesting to see what happens on sunday dave what did you think of it um yeah i mean i enjoyed it there was speculated that Ziggler was gonna be there so i think a lot of us knew he was this was like the perfect opportunity to bring him back and it worked i would still love to see them in a tag match or even a lot for summer break and it seems like Lana's been working on wrestling a little bit, and I would just like to see her get going. She really has it cool. But yeah, I mean, I think this match, I don't think the card is needed for the SummerSlam card, but it's, I'm looking forward to this match. I think it could be one of the better matches. And Ziggler's reaction just to be back, I mean, he's just like, he hates it, you know, waiting for so long, he would have been there wrestling without making a movie. Yeah, he looked like he really enjoyed to be back, and. Um, I just I think we'll eventually see Lana in the ring. I just don't think WWE maybe thinks she's ready for it. And you know how they all are about safety and everything. And I don't oh, yeah. throw her That's out there. Oh, well, you know, I have no problem with putting uh, that one chick from uh, Full Viva in the ring. Who's that, Eva Marie? Yeah. Well, apparently she's gotten better. So I, mean, I saw her. For, for, it was all right. I haven't seen her. Uh, NXT debut. Yeah, so I haven't really watched it too much. I haven't. I need to catch yeah, up on NXT to be honest with you. Her, her in the ring, it just doesn't look natural. It looks too forced. She doesn't look like a natural, like Becky Lynch and Sasha Something like it. It just looks like it's all forced. That's why she's playing a wrestler. Right. I mean, That's, she's training with one know. of the better wrestlers in the in the in the world with. Brian Kendrick. Well, so, well, he's one of the better wrestlers in the world. Well, I mean, he's one of the probably the better trainers to be trained by. Uh, no, I mean, yeah, he he's can. A, he's a good trainer. Yeah, I mean, he was trained by Shawn, one of the best wrestlers in the world, Shawn Michaels, but he just never really did anything. Right. So I mostly remember him for Spanky. Right. I mean, I don't want to turn this into a bashing Eva Marie, but uh, I mean, it's terrible. She's oh, not yeah. the greatest, but, you know, I mean, Lana, I don't think has wrestled a match in her life. So yeah. I don't think uh, they want to throw her out there in one of the biggest shows uh, of the summer and have her look like yeah, a I don't think Lana was, it looks like a supermodel trying to be a wrestler, kind of like Eva Marie does to me. Right. It looks more natural to her. Yeah, I mean, Eva Marie to me looks fake. But I mean, yeah, so I, I'm not gonna judge her yet. I want to see her in a couple of more matches. And yeah. See where we go from there. But next uh, was what, Justin? Right back and Miz. Uh, pretty much just a. I don't want to say a squash match, but pretty much a squash match with Miz just getting beat down by Ryback. Ryback gets the win. Big Show's on commentary. Doesn't really get involved in the match, but we do see these guys going at each other at SummerSlam. Um, is there anything y'all want to say about the match or touch on it before we move on? Not really. I turned the channel and turned it back, and it was over. <laughs> Dave? Yeah, I mean, other than it's looking, I don't know if it's looking like Ryback is going to dominate this match or if Miz or Big Show is actually going to walk away with that title. I mean, I know you don't think it's fair to, to 
take the title from and give a chance to shine with it a little bit. But um, I just think that. We'll see. Go ahead. I'm, I didn't mean to interrupt. I don't know what to say. We'll see. I mean, what happens? I just don't think it'd be smart for the WWE just to uh, kill that momentum that Ryback has right now, uh, especially with the fans. He's very over. Um, this will be, I think, his first title defense. Um, yeah. No, second, because he did defend it, but there was a DQ at that one paper deal. Oh, that's right. Oh, all right. You're all right. That's right. That's right. So this will be technically his second, and I mean he got hurt. He, which I mean a staph infection you can't you know oh. prevent. That just happens. You know something you can't do. You know in the ring that'd be safe or and he just got it. He dealt with it. I don't even think WWE thought he would be back for SummerSlam. So I mean kudos for him to be back in time to have a match at SummerSlam. He's over with the crowd. I I I think he's gotten better on the mic. Uh, he's definitely a guy that started from the bottom and gotten way better because I know when he's had his feuds with CM, um, CM Punk and uh, mm -hmm. John Cena, he nobody really cared for him and thought he was just uh, given a chance because he was a big guy. Then he had that rap for hurting people too. Right, right. And uh, I just... Oh, yeah, I, I agree because I was the same way when he first got that title shot against CM Punk. I'm like, what, Really? You know, it was just like one of those things. Like, he, it was like you don't think he deserved it yet. I mean, all you people he ever beat at that point were a bunch of jobbers, and, and he was like the new Goldberg. Right, and he yeah. he may have not deserved it at the time, but I think he's gotten way better, and he deserves where he's at now. And and if you notice, he doesn't get those Goldberg chants anymore. Yeah, he, uh, he gets. I mean, he might in New York, but I mean, you know, that's a different crowd. Maybe, uh, possibly, but yeah. Um, He's right now he's over, and I do hope he wins on Sunday. Uh, next match, Justin? Uh, it was the contract signing. Oh, okay. This one was good. This is good. This is good. No table smashing either. Um, Rollins and Cena t contract signing. Uh, I thought both of those promos killed it. I thought Cena was good. I thought Rollins was good. Um, I'm glad to know that – it. Uh, for some reason, I thought Cena only won the title 14 times. Got it 15, yeah. He's won it 15 because I was like, what oh, man, they just, they just came out with a shirt that just ruined the main, the, the match. But they didn't. Yeah, um, yeah because it's kind of just said, why would they break out a brand new John Cena shirt that has 15 on it for one time? Yeah. Right. Or for one week. You know, it, it's almost like guaranteeing you, okay, the Browns going to keep the title. And Cena's going to lose that. I mean, the only uh, I'll talk more about it tomorrow, but yeah, that's what I was just gonna say. Uh, we'll, we'll save it for tomorrow. But uh, the the contract signing was one of the better ones that I've seen in a while. It wasn't no physical one; it was just them going at it. John Cena said his stuff. Just their words alone, it was just like, damn. Yeah, Seth Rollins said his stuff, and um, I, I mean, don't really like Cena saying like, "Oh, you're just trying to be able to uh, John, you know, wanted me or something like that. Like, what? I think it's more for the shirt, but it was like, I don't really think he turned John Cena wanted me at all. No, I think it was more because of the shirt. And I, I mean, Colin saying that he's going to make Seth Rollins his bitch. And yeah, but then he even I basically went after Triple H, too, talking shit about Triple H. I mean, right. I was, and then Triple H's face during the whole segment was gold, too. I mean, he just looked pissed yeah. off. Uh, JR, I guess JR said something on a blog or something like he thought Triple H would be involved in the main event somehow or, or that match or something. So we'll see if that happens. Yeah, so definitely a good segment. I I would suggest anybody go back and watch that. It was pretty good. Um, next, Justin? The tag match, eight-man tag. Oh. I mean, there's nothing really to talk about this match. Uh, New Day killed it. I thought New Day was good. Um, they're 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 flip flopping Los Matadores. Last week they were heel, now they were fa they were faces. Last week on the face team, now they're on the hill team. I was just like, what the hell? 
Yeah, I just I love. It. I mean, I don't want them in a match or anything, but Torito and Woods' little feud is funny. I, oh, yeah. That makes me laugh. He's like a manager, you know? He's like a manager getting up and doing something. He's like a manager slash wrestler with these guys. I can see him as like a Jimmy Hart. I mean, he's like, if he only had a megaphone, that'd be ten times better. Yeah, he's funny. Yeah, I would actually say like Bobby Keenan more than anything. Yeah, well, yeah. Regardless, he's funny. Um, yeah. The match really wasn't really a match. I think it was like five minutes long. Uh, oh, yeah. A lot of Divas action tonight, so I mean that really is prime time. Pl- yeah, the prime uh, time players and the Lucha Dragons get the win. Uh, pretty much just setting up the match between the four teams at SummerSlam, which I do th- think it'll be a good one uh, if it's given, you know, a good amount of time, which it should. Give it, enough time. it should, you know but I hope. I say at least twenty minutes. Hopefully, I don't know if they'll get that long because. Because all the matches they have on this card, I mean, I think that's very low on their priority to give the tag division a lot of time. If any title match should not get a lot of time, it would be the IC title to me. That's what I would I would do it. But so you got Owens, we got all these great matches, and you want to have enough time to me, that would. I wouldn't be surprised if that match got you know, pushed to the pre show. Oh, no, no, no. No way. I don't, I don't think they'll do that, but I don't think they'll get as much as time as we want them to be. That's for sure. But, yeah, Lucha Dragons. Going 10 minutes, if that. Maybe. 10 to 15 is probably the ballpark, I think. Um, which isn't too bad. But with four teams, wow. you're not going to get a lot of action from a lot of teams. But, oh, well. Uh, next, Justin. Uh, last match of the night, uh, Nikki Bella and Sasha Banks. Okay. And the reason why we're flying by the Raw review is one reason. We don't want to give away too much of our uh, predictions yeah, for so SummerSlam yeah. because we could go off on a tangent about a lot of things. And I think we're holding back a lot Yes. Uh, for tomorrow's video. So don't hate on us too much on this short raw review or short video because I think the video is going to be short tonight. Uh, but we will be back tomorrow night. Um, I'm not sure on a time yet. We'll probably decide at the end of the, at the, end of the video. But um, uh, we'll be definitely – getting more into it and more in depth tomorrow on our SummerSlam prediction show. Anyways, Sasha Banks and Nikki Bella. Um, the main event of Raw. Yes. Technically the main event, right. Um, before Dave goes off on what he's going to say, I already know he's going to talk about the crowd. Um, I think the oh, W... Oh, oh, I forgot, oh, dang, I forgot all about it. The crowd, yes, kind of shitted on the match, but I think the WWE kind of put them in a tough spot. Um, yeah, they should have had Lesnar go and then them actually. Have, made- having them be before Lesnar, uh, being the hometown guy, kind of put them in a tough spot, being in this, you know, home city. But if you're going to want more diva stuff or more women's wrestling, I mean, don't complain when they don't have it on Raw because crowds like that shit on the match. And it's and boring- that's- Right. That's this that's the normal one thing. I mean, yeah, I get it. Brock they probably said, Oh shit, Raw's almost over, we're not gonna get a lot of Brock. Mm-hmm. And um they're probably anxious and worried about that. So I guess get it, yeah, we want Brock chance are gonna happen. I get it. I understand that. But show a little bit of respect because you got a women's you got the champ versus champ they're busting their ass in a match right and if anybody didn't know sasha banks has a lot of history with the minnesota uh uh, arena where they were at the target center because she was a fan and that's where they announced when eddie guerrero died and she was there so and she was a huge fan of eddie guerrero yep so i mean like us. Yeah, so I mean, I mean she grew up loving wrestling. Always wanted to be a wrestler. Right, and the, and you got and then the, you have the fans crapping on the match, which I mean, I get it. He's, I mean, I wouldn't. I, I don't know if I would go that far if they were gonna do like a Shawn Michaels segment after. I mean, I wouldn't go that far because these ladies busted their ass to get this revolution, if you want to call it, going. Exactly. With 
you know, us getting more women's wrestling on Raw and on SmackDown. I mean, on rest, on their on TV, period, and and longer than you know, two and a half minute matches, and then we get the crowd crapping on it. I mean, I'm sure it, it didn't make Sasha and Nikki Bella feel really good. So, anyways, thought the match was good. Uh, Sasha gets to win again. Taps, she tapped. She, she tapped her out twice already now. Yeah. So. I mean, I don't know what they may do. Maybe Sasha retains at TakeOver, and then maybe at Night of Champions, we have a champion versus champion match, which I don't know how that would work. Uh, that would be pretty awesome. Uh, if they went with Nikki Bella winning, but I don't think they would. Maybe maybe Bailey wins, which I think will happen. But um, she, it's, she deserves it. Now. It's her time to get it now. I, I mean, think, yeah, I mean, it usually – uh, I don't want to say so much for uh, Balor quite yet, but usually when they give you the world title, that means that you're soon going to be up on the roster. So um, I, I don't know how Bailey will play out on the main roster with her gimmick. Yeah. Uh, but she's definitely a crowd out. favorite in NXT. It so, kind of works. I mean, there are certain crowds anyway. You know, I mean, it could work. I mean, it works with the Adam Burrows. They worked in NXT and it just crapped on the main roster. Right. I mean, it was terrible. I mean, it could work. I mean, you never know, like, I mean, the Sasha Banks character isn't really a character. It's just more of something different. But her whole giving hugs and giving out headbands to kids and stuff like that, it's kind of like they reversed John Cena a little bit. Like a female John Cena with all that, the kids loving her. Like all the kids love John Cena, so it can work. Yeah, I mean, we'll find out soon enough. But um, let's move on to. Oh, I mean, no, no. Give y'all thoughts. So we'll go with Dave first, because I know he's gonna probably have some say, some stuff to say. Uh, yeah, I mean, the match was. I was really enjoying the match. I thought it was really good. I was really happy that Foster Bank that they were both pretty much main event in Raw, and then. No, go ahead. Oh, I, I, was, I know you're done. I was just going to say that this is probably one of the best Divas matches we've had in a long time. Yeah. 
had on Raw since probably like later in Trish days. No, they have good chemistry, and um, I'm, I'm just—I mean, I'm looking forward to the match at SummerSlam. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to Bailey. About Bailey, I mean, I think Sasha actually is like a cheaper title, but you never know. Becky, um, uh, Bailey had so many shots at the title, and just never won. It's kind of like the Sami Zayn effect a little bit. Yeah, like, yeah. Opportunity, just never winning it, and then finally. So this could be her shot right now. Just take the title and see what she can do with it. Right. Justin? And I, I really enjoyed the match, uh, except for the crowd doing all that We Want Lesnar stuff. But, I mean, the match itself was good. Uh, I think they do have good chemistry. Um, you know, uh, ever since uh, uh, Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch went out on the NXT TakeOver special, I mean, I've been, you know, up on uh, Sasha Banks a lot. And then uh, Nikki Bella also, I used to not even care for her, but now I like her as well. Uh, you know, she's gotten a lot better in the ring. She's gotten better on the mic. Um, I actually want to see her keep the title for as long as she can just to see how far they take it with her. I mean, I'm sure she'll break AJ's record now. I mean, I doubt she'll go the full year, but, I mean, I, I like where they're going with this whole deal. So I, I really like the match a lot. Yeah, she's definitely going to break AJ Lee's record. Yeah. I think that's a far gone conclusion right there. I don't yeah. think they want the. I think they're trying to distance their way with Punk and uh, AJ. Yeah. AJ. Even though I do. Yeah. Even though AJ. Oh, I didn't mean. I might have been misunderstood. I did not mean Sasha Banks and Nikki Bell the best match that Trish Leader. I was meaning uh, Sasha and Becky Lynch. Yes, oh. NXT, yeah. That okay. match, I mean, it was probably one of the best matches. And I mean, yeah, and I could see eventually Sasha Banks made of any wrong with either Charlotte or even Nikki if they wanted to. Oh, definitely. But uh, what I was going to say, oh, shoot, now I kind of lost my train of thought. Um, oh, oh, well. And then yeah. kudos for Nikki putting her over twice, too. I mean, that's... Shows how much faith she has in her, so. Right. What I was going to say was they are trying to distance their way with Punk and AJ Lee, but they are definitely uh, Hall of Famers, so. Oh, yeah. Who's that? AJ and uh, Punk. But when they AJ, get. When, AJ is a Hall of Famer? Oh, definitely. She's only there like three years, or maybe four. Yeah, but she changed a lot of stuff, though. I mean, she did do a lot of good stuff. I think she kind of changed the game, and also she was. Yeah, I get. Yeah, I understand she that. Was a, I, she was. I think she was like the, she was the longest like, reigning, uh, longest reigning Divas champion. Uh, okay, maybe because of that. But then you would say, uh, so with Nikki, if Nikki Bella breaks her record, is she a guaranteed Hall of Famer then too? I think so. Yes. Okay, well, then, yeah, okay, okay, but, yeah, I just mean, from, just, if you don't count AJ's title, long title reign, but she really didn't have no one to face. I mean, sure, I mean, I mean, I mean AJ... that's the only difference, I think, with that, is she didn't really face nobody. Half the time, she would be on pay-per-view. Right, I mean, different times, but to hold it for that long is an accomplishment as it own, as it is already, and I think, you know, same thing with Nikki Bella, if she wins it, you know, the whole half the time she had it, she was in the same situation as AJ Lee. She didn't really have competition. Exactly, yeah. And now well, she I does. Think, I think Nikki wrestled every pay per view since she won it. I mean, she may have, and I and I, I mean, I don't remember or recall, and she may have, but I think they both deserve to be in the Hall of Fame, just especially if Nikki uh, surpasses AJ Lee. I mean, Punk is automatic. Yeah, yeah. My eye. Uh, See, I have no problem with that because he's actually had a long wrestling career. I was going to look at it from AJ what wrestled me four years. Uh oh, do we freeze? Nope. Want you to, well, he's probably never going to be in the Hall of Fame because he retired at like 28. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, I mean I, and I think if she wasn't with Punk, she'd probably still be wrestling. Yes. So. And you know, before AJ Lee, I mean, women's wrestling was like, eh, you know, whatever. But when she started doing it and started getting really good, people tuned into it just to see her. So, right. I mean, that alone right there says something. But that's here or there. That's a different combo. But 
Definitely uh, Sasha Banks and Nikki killed it last night, regardless of what the fans thought or the crowd thought. So let's just move on to what was the end of the night with Brock Lesnar's little homecoming. They had the uh, streamers, fireworks. Uh, yeah, they had everything. Uh, we had Paul Heyman sing a little bit. That was pretty good. I laughed at that. Um, a nice little promo by Paul Heyman. Uh, it was kind of short and sweet. So, I mean – I don't blame the fans booing on the Undertaker last night. Uh, yeah, Undertaker ends up, reversal. Yeah, Undertaker comes in and gets involved again, hits him in the in, uh, low blows him again. Um, I don't think he actually low blowed him, but I think Brock sold it as a low blow. Yeah, he, like he, kicked, he kicked him in the like near the I guess near that area. It looked like to me, it looked like he kicked him in the midsection at first, but the Brock yeah, played it well. Yeah, Brock played it well, and that seems to be like their snick against the Undertaker that he comes in there and low blows people. But yeah, that's the only way you can slow down Brock. But does low blow him too. yeah, he does that choke slam, I believe, and then the tombstone. tombstone. So in the night with Undertaker going over on Brock, fans booing in the back, some chairs, of course, but some that's boo- hometown curse to get your ass whooped in your hometown. Yeah, more booze yeah. than cheers, that's for sure. But I mean, that's it right there. You always get your ass kicked in your hometown. Yep. Unless you're Shawn Michaels. Yep. Um, Absolutely. I, I enjoyed the segment. I I kind of have the mixed feelings on who I think is going to win. Um, I think it's obvious who's going to win. Really? I think just because what Paul Heyman said, Undertaker has never beaten Brock Lesnar ever. He will be conquered. I think Undertaker goes over on Brock. I always thought SummerSlam predicted, but I think Undertaker wins this match just simply because he's always put Brock over. He gave him the streak. He, he was, when he was coming up younger, he put him over every single time. And I think it's payback. It's time for Brock to put the Undertaker over. I got some thoughts, but I'm saving it for tomorrow. So fair I enough, fair enough. Stuff, and so but, I don't um, know. I think uh, we all be- we all agree that Raw ended up ended pretty strong on a strong note. Uh, yeah, it wasn't a great show last night, but I mean, it wasn't terrible. The Divas matches were good. I mean, that was really the only like besides Taker and Brock and the, that promo with Cena and Rollins. I mean, the Divas are really what shines tonight, and Lana and Rusev and Ziggler. But other than that, I mean, we did. They did do something with, uh, we did get on some quick promo, but I found the promo, I don't know Tony even caught it or not, because the uh, guys came around, but which started with the King Bear. I really enjoyed that promo. That oh, really that's right, that's right. I didn't see all of it now. I uh, switched over. But it was really good. I liked it. And it was like, it was different. I really loved the Stardust character. I really knew. Bear called I'm, himself the Cosmic King. Hmm. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to the match. Um. Because I want to see how Stephen Amell does, and he I hope see- he comes out in full gear. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Apparently, no, apparently he's they. Um, someone on Twitter said, "Please don't wear a shirt in the match." Uh, yeah, I see that. And he said he's not gonna he's not gonna wear a shirt, but doesn't mean he's not gonna come out wearing something. So yeah, yeah, but- I think so. He did say on Twitter too this week that he got his he got his costume or he got his uh, attire or whatever in gear. So oh, it would be interesting if he came out with, like, a version of the, the Green Arrow costume. That would be really cool. That yeah. would be badass. And I'm giving him 100% credit if he comes out there and kills it. I mean, I, I have a high hopes that he will. Uh, he's an athlete, though. I mean, because if you see, I mean, some of the stuff he's doing, like, uh, freaking his Facebook, he's doing this freaking, this crazy thing on this big old meme thing, like, you see it, like, gymnastics and stuff like that. So definitely should be an interesting match, but we'll touch more about that tomorrow. Uh, I think we'll probably do it about 8 or 9 Eastern uh, uh, tomorrow night. Um, just look for us on YouTube, hopefully, or uh, uh, Google Hangout where we'll be doing our video. Um, but, yeah, solid solid ending to Raw. But let's touch on Tough Enough tonight before we end the show. Uh, we already knew who were going to be the final three, which was going to be ZZ, Tanner, and Josh. Um Today on the show, they they figured out what finishing moves that they were going to use. Um, 
finally in ring work. Yeah, a lot. I think like the half of the show was more in ring work than uh, than anything. Yeah. Yeah, the whole season, the, the, every episode of the season should have been. Right. They gave uh, Sarah a little bit of a hard time. Um, again, she seems to be the one to get a, more of the hard time than anyone on the show yet uh, left. Um, I mean, any, any. I thought she did good on her. They even said, I think, that, okay, that's good. The Russian leg sweep, you know, she's doing good. And then going to the arm bar. Say, we do. So we'll know. We'll, like you talk about, we'll know next week that the, the final four will get that to the match. So I just think if she wants to be, uh, if she, she's always wanted to be a wrestler. I think you've always have in the back of your mind what would be your finishing move. Yeah, she didn't even know. She was like, uh. Well, I don't think she was a, always wanted to be a wrestler, though. You know, I don't think she did. I don't think Amanda did either. And then ZZ uh, with that know. crap he said. I mean, ZZ, I mean, for someone Can like. Can you imagine if Patrick was there right now? Oh, God. She moved down Pat. I'll do what I'm going to do. Right. I mean,. Let's just get to the end of it, because uh, it's Tanner, ZZ, and Josh. For some odd reason, I don't know why Josh, Daniel Bryan didn't use his save. Because if he would have used Weird, his save, if it on Tanner, ZZ would have went home tonight. Because well, um, Josh killed him. Votes. Yeah, he killed him in the votes. It so, should have been Tanner and Josh. I mean, it, it should have been the two best at the competition, not a guy who's never been, I don't think he even finished the comp. I'm sure he might have finished. He had trouble finishing the very first competition. This guy's never done anything. He says the same thing every week. I'm doing my best. I'm trying. I do it for all the kids with smile on race. That's all he ever says every single week. Mm -hmm. I'm improving. That's all he says. And then he but said he didn't think how uh, physical it was right. either. They bust their ass to do with their Josh and Tanner to, to do this, but he only does it when the camera's on. Right. What did you say, Justin? No, I was just saying how we said earlier that uh, he didn't realize how physical it was. Oh, no, right. Do you not know what the name of this show is? I mean, how could you yeah. not know how physical it was going to be? You watch any of them uh, past seasons? Yeah, so you know it's gonna be tough. Probably this is probably not. the this is probably the weakest tough enough in terms of physical challenges. Yes. Because I remember I remember Taz. Yeah, I remember I mean, like when Taz was Taz would have them do like mud wrestling and yeah. one chick got injured in that one where we had them like mud wrestling and like her ankle or leg or something Yeah, so I mean this is probably the least amount of physical Challenge because I'm, I'm sure they're more about safety now um, in the ring that they've done. So, I mean, ZZ, you've gotten it kind of easy, but Tanner goes home. It's left with Josh and ZZ and Sarah and Amanda. And I'll tell you right now, Amanda's not winning. There's no way in, 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 in hell that Amanda wins, in my opinion. I mean, who wants to go home? I mean, this is terrible. Because none of these, you got a choice from a Kelly Kelly crappy wrestler wannabe mm -hmm. to someone who looks like, doesn't look like AJ Lee at all, but they got that same girl next door thing from a small. But it must, is this moment here, I've noticed this every week it seems like they always put up their Sarah Lee Hope Michigan. They never do that for anybody else. I haven't seen anyone else in the show that for. Every week it's just like a pop up. Like, who cares she's from Michigan? The only thing I think Amanda does have over Sarah Lee is she uh, she has the look that they like. Like, she's like an Eva Marie. She's pr pretty, I guess, like the Miss said. That's the only thing I think she has over Sarah Lee is the look that they like. Well, she's hot. That's about it. Well, yeah, but I mean, that's what I'm saying. That's the kind of, that's what the kind of look they want. Like, right, they right, right. Here. right. Uh, hot blonde, whatever. Yeah, happened. but the Barbie now look is not what's going on in the WWE right now. Well, at least not right now, no. And I mean, unless I hope it doesn't come back. unless she kind of blonde. proves herself, yeah. yeah, to be better. I mean, there's no way like the fan vote is overseeding true talent in this. It is. That's the that's the main problem. 
And they already voted up the best woman there, wrestling wise, which was Chelsea. Right. Chelsea should have won the women's side of the Tough Enough. And, or that, at least not her, it was that uh, Georgia or Georgia or even that Jersey chick. I don't remember her name. Uh, she, Dario, yeah, Dario. she probably had more potential than these two ladies that have, are left. To me, Sarah, oh. Sarah just seems weak, and uh, like she, she may work out, but she doesn't look like she does. I mean, maybe work out like a lot of times when you're doing a ballet. I mean, other than that, what's she really gonna do? Yeah, I mean, she's not gonna do. Yeah, they both definitely. The, the ladies definitely need more time training wise in the mm. men. Unless it's like ZZ wins. Oh, they think it's gonna be easy. If they go to NXT, they were working with Sarah Delray, and she's gonna I mean really, I mean Sasha even said ever since Sarah Delray came in there it's changed completely. Yep. So I mean yeah, you think this is hard when you get down there. Right, and I and I've been a fan of Josh for a while. If it wasn't Josh, it was gonna be Patrick. And I just think Josh has that look. And I, you know, I've already read that Vince McMahon loves him, and that even if he loses, that they plan on signing him, which I think is great. But if ZZ wins, I I can see him doing it because of the popular vote. I mean, it's a joke. He's gonna get half a million dollars to never do anything. Right. My thing is, do you out of the before we end the show? Out of the four people left, three years from now, do you see any of them still in the rest until in WWE? Uh, wrestling wise, um, it depends. I think. I mean, if Zizi and Sarah went, I mean, I don't know here if like they like Josh and Amanda. I mean, because you look at. Right, so I, I think it's hard to say that any of them would be. I mean, if I, 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 I'm a little bit more biased. I like Josh a lot. I think he has the look. I think he, he's a big man, which they kind of lack in, in WWE right now. Um, he's more of an athletic big man. Um, the Yeti kind of shit kind of is annoying a little bit. Yeah, that kind of is getting annoying. I don't want his gimmick to be all about that, but it seems like that's what WWE is probably going to run with. Yeah, it's almost like the big guys wrestling is really kind of not what it is. I know Vince McMahon loves the big guys and the big, tall giants, but it seems like it's more about the young, the small, athletic wrestlers what's really captivating audiences today. Some of your biggest stars, like Seth Rollins, Ian Ambrose, Dolph Ziggler, those are the biggest stars right now. Yes, John Cena's one of the top star, I get that. But he's not really a giant. No. I mean, Big Show, Kane, I mean, that's about it. And they're not really doing anything. No, that's uh, what I, I think. think. The last time a diesel type wrestler actually was, was there anything. No, there isn't one. I mean, they got a guy in NXT right now. It's a pretty big uh, guy, or Cassidy. I mean, he's good. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would love to see him get brought up as like a dominant big man. But I mean, I don't know if Josh, I'm not saying he wouldn't work, but it seems like we're not in the giant, we're kind of in the indie, small, high flying, slash ring of honor type wrestler nowadays. Mm. Mm-hmm. I mean, we'll, I mean we'll, we'll find out soon enough. Um, I can't believe Brian didn't use his say. Still in wrestling and outside of wrestling. And he's not so giant. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, so I mean, do you guys think that Giants are really what's selling right now, or is it more the high flying or the smaller guys? I don't know. Um, Question. Right now, it's probably the smaller dudes. Seem to be getting the. Uh, I mean, other than um, Ryback. So I don't know. Him a giant, though. I mean, he's you know, a big he's guy. Like a, a big, tall guy. Oh no, you know? no! It's all about the yeah. small guys right now. Small, yeah, uh, yeah, the yeah. athletic guys more, more word for it. But. To end the show on a on a high note, um, SummerSlam is this Sunday, uh, so it should be a good one. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow night with a prediction show on what will go down. Uh, give our thoughts in in depth look on not all the matches like on a, like a full you know description and everything, but you know on a few of them, probably about five or six, and then uh, we'll be back on Sunday evening. Um, I'm probably about 10:30 Eastern. I mean, 11:30 Eastern. Uh, with the uh, SummerSlam review. Hopefully, it's a good one. With all this, uh, not so much hype about it, but it being such a big show and four hours long, you don't want it to be a shitty show. So, uh, any last thoughts before we end it tonight? No, I'm good. Dave. Um, just you know, there's. A lot of these, uh, with Women Revolution going on, and if you guys, I don't know what you've seen, it's just the thing on Kaker, the last Kaker, where Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks play the best women's match in the year in the WWE. So go watch that Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks match. That's awesome. There you go. That's uh, Dave's endorsement uh, in WWE Network Pick of the Week. So Sasha Banks, Becky Lynch, NXT TakeOver. I believe it was the last one they had, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't the best match on that whole card. Right, I agree. So uh, we're gonna end it there. Uh, no, it wasn't. It wasn't the Japan one. There so, was the one before. Yeah. Yeah, don't get in confused, people. It was the one before that one. Yeah. So. That was the last takeover. Uh, I don't know what it was called. Was it or? Something like that. Something like that. But uh, yeah, we'll be yeah, back. Uh, it was before Japan, I believe. Yeah. Uh, it was yeah, before yeah. the Japan one, right? I think that's when Balor became the number one con- uh, yeah. contender. Uh, so we'll be back tomorrow and um, about 8 or 9 Eastern, give or take. So just tune into YouTube and look for us, and uh, we'll be back. So we appreciate everybody watching, and hopefully this episode's on YouTube, or if not, I'll figure out something. I appreciate everybody watching, and uh, we'll be back tomorrow night.